Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net with a brand new, very exciting After Effects tutorial. So today we're going to take a look at creating some cool eye effects like you see here. Okay, so as you can see, we've uh, replaced the eye with sort of an empty, creepy eye. And uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I have here is a shot of myself looking up at the camera mysteriously, probably looking down, noticing my shoe is untied, and I can't believe it. That's intense. Okay. First thing, let's create a new null object. And this null object is going to be the container for our tracking data. So we'll uh, right click on the footage and choose track motion. Our tracker control pops up. We want to track the position and the rotation. I'm going to zoom in here and uh, we'll track the left eye and uh, bring this on the left eye we want to make it kind of large because there's not a lot of detail here and then we'll track this corner of the eye okay and I'm gonna go ahead and track forward from the middle and I'll click track forward And then I'm going to come back to where I started tracking and then track backwards. Now we're going to run off the frame here. What we'll do is we'll track frame by frame until it messes up. Okay, so right here it sort of went out of control. So I'm going to choose Edit, Undo, and instead I'm going to use the Page Up and Page Down keys to cycle through the frames. And then I'm just going to move the track points center point to where I think it should be. So I'll move this to about here and I'll move this to about here. Then I'll do page up, move the points again, page up, and we'll move the points a final time. So we had to do this by hand, but it looks pretty good. So we're going to use that. Now it's important to have a complete tracking data for this shot so everything can be linked to it later on. So with that all done, I'm going to choose Edit Target, make sure our null object is selected, choose OK, and Apply, and then OK. So now we have our null object that is perfectly stuck onto our eye and it looks pretty good. So what we need to do now is create our replacement eye. So I'll close the tracker control. Okay, in the project window I have this eye reference movie and I'm going to drag that into a new comp and what we're going to do is use this to recreate our empty eyeball. So I'm going to duplicate this so we have two copies. Now the first copy I want to stop on this frame where I'm looking all the way to the right and I'm going to right click on the footage, choose time, freeze frame. And then I'm going to go to the part where I'm looking to the left, right click on this footage, choose time, freeze frame. So now we have two still frames. Now if you're in After Effects 6.5 to do a still frame, here's what you do. You go to the frame you want choose layer enable time remapping which is somewhere around here for me it's right here and then you set a keyframe for the time you want to freeze and then you delete the end and the beginning keyframe and so now you have a still frame so there you go now with the eye layer selected I'm gonna take the pen tool and draw a shape around the white part of the eye And then I'm going to turn our other layer on and do the same thing with the pen tool. Just click and drag. And that looks good. Now what we want to do is blend these together. So I'm going to take the top layer, take a rectangle mask and just draw it, overlap it just a bit, and then hit M. 
um, actually hit uh, MM and what we want to do is make the second mask subtract and what it's doing is sort of cutting out that part and then I'm going to feather it a little bit and then I'll turn our other layer back on and basically that sort of just blends it together a little bit okay now the other step will change the composition settings and make it 200 by 200 and choose OK. And then I'll move this into the center of the comp. And this will just make it easier to work with later. Um, also, let me make the comp a little bit longer. So I'll make it like three seconds and choose OK. And then extend the layers. And that way it's long enough in our. So I'm going to close it. And then in our main comp, I'm going to drag that eye reference out. So there's our eyeball. Now what we want to do is scale the eyeball up just a bit. Now you probably want to do like high resolution images, but this is what we have. And uh, what are you going to do? Um, and I'm going to take this uh, eye reference and parent it to our null object. And the null object is for the left eye. And so now, very roughly, we have the effect. Go ahead and cut it off at that point. But what we need to do is create a mat for the eye. So I'm going to create a new solid. We'll go ahead and make it uh, yellow or, I don't know, green, something that we can see good. And we'll shut the eye off for the layer take the pen tool, zoom in to the eye, and draw a shape around the white part of the eye. So with that layer selected, we'll start drawing our eye shape. As few points as possible. And we can turn that on and then parent it to our left eye null object and that should make it stick to the eye pretty well and what we want to do is adjust it so that the eye is covered up for most of the shot so the eyelids may open and close a bit so we want to adjust the mask by keyframing it so if we hit M that brings up the mask shape set the stopwatch and we'll just keyframe it as needed so that we just show the white part of the eye. So as the eye goes down here we also probably want to shrink the mask a bit so that we only see that area. So. So you don't have to do it frame by frame, but you just want it to look good. And we can turn this on so we can see what it's looking like. Okay, so that should work for now, but this is the part you want to make sure looks good. So I'll go ahead and shut that off. And what we want to do now is use this as a mat. And to do that, we're going to put this, let's say, above the eye, so it's in place. We're going to turn our eye on. So here is our actual eye. And we want to set the track mat to alpha mat. And what that does is uses this layer as sort of an alpha transparency map so that we only see it through that area. Now we can see a few little problems here, but we'll fix that by changing some of the mask options. So hit MM and we'll feather the mask about 1.5 and we'll expand the mask about 0.75 and maybe 1. And any adjustments you make to the mat now will affect the transparency of the eye. So I want it to look pretty good and now we can move the eye into position. So we want it to be, you know, just about here. 
and that's gonna look really good so what we want to do next is add our shadow so to do that I'm gonna create a new solid and we want to make it the same color as the shadow over this eye and choose OK we'll and shut the eye off We'll zoom in here we'll take the pen tool we want to draw the shape of this shadow slash eyelash so we'll just uh, select that dark brown layer and we'll click and just draw a quick shape here and then just make it a little bit larger around the outside now if we turn this on we can feather the mask a bit so if we hit F we can feather it about five pixels and that creates sort of a soft shadow. Now we also want to make even even softer shadow, but we want to keep this one here. So I'm going to duplicate the mask, edit, duplicate, and then feather out the second mask more. So what we have is the first mask and then we have the second mask which is just a lot softer. Now the problem here is we have this extra eye shadow which doesn't look too great. So what we'll do is use this same mat to erase the excess shadow. So I'll duplicate the mat, edit, duplicate, put it above the shadow, and set the shadow to alpha mat. And what that does is makes it so we only see the shadow. But the problem here is it's sort of cutting off a little too much. So we'll take the mat and we'll bring down the mask options here and we're going to expand the mask. See that if we expand it just a little bit it kind of blends in with the actual part of the eye we want to blend. Now I'm going to take the shadow and we're going to make it a little darker so I'm going to go into the solid settings and we'll just make it a little bit darker. And that way it just blends a little bit better. Now I do want to feather the shadow out. So now that we have it in place, let's go ahead and feather the first one about six and the second one just a little bit more. And we may want to bring the expansion up just a little bit on the first one. So negative two. So that looks pretty good and we do want to take our shadow and link it to the left eye so that pretty much everything is linked to our tracking data and so now we have the eye that sticks on there pretty well and we can probably bring the opacity down to about 90 maybe 95 and that way it looks like that eye is really in there in set you know okay so let's go and make our little specular highlight so I'm gonna create a new solid and we want the solid to be the same color as the highlight and I'll choose OK and we'll shut it off take the elliptical mask tool and we want to draw a shape pretty much the same size as the one here and that looks pretty close I'm gonna sort of play with the mask to make it a little irregular so I'm just gonna shift it a bit that way it just looks a little bit more realistic and less uh, less perfect. So then I'm going to use the arrow keys and just move it over to our other eye. And what we can do is shut the uh, replacement eye off and then line this up with the actual glare that's on this eye. And then we turn that back on. That way we know it's in the correct place. And maybe we'll feather it out about one pixel change the transfer mode to add uh, let's say two pixels one and a half okay so that looks pretty good and again we want to parent the specular to our left eye so we'll call this specular okay so any adjustments you need to make you can uh, you can make those um, we do want to change the brightness of the eye as it comes from down below so we'll take the eye choose effect let's see color correction exposure 
And uh, let's see, just as it starts to be get darker, we'll set a stopwatch keyframe, move forward, and just kind of darken it a bit. Now, we can probably fix the eye getting off track there um, by maybe adjusting the position of our null object. And we can do that just by selecting it and then repositioning it. So you can make any adjustments that you need to make just by uh, playing with this. And then also you can play with the mask for the eye and shrink it as needed. Let's, uh, let's take a look at a few other possibilities. Okay, for example, I can take this eye and choose Effect Color Correction Tint and maybe change this to red and this to red and maybe the opacity bring it down a bit and voila you have a pink eye zombie that could cause some serious eye infections that you don't want to be a part of so you have to be worried about him getting you but now you have to be worried about catching two infections um, so that's kind of a cool way uh, to create some other eye effects um, you could also tint it you know even darker than that so that you know you create sort of like a dark zombie eye um, or even just a totally black eye um, you want to have like some shading in there but you know you could you do want to make sure your mask is correct so that it looks good um, you could also do things like add the eyeball back in and you know do some cat eye effects um, maybe make the eye dilate Actually, I created that effect. Let's let's take a look. What I did is took an eye um, picture, which is just the eyeball, and then added a bulge effect to it so that it sort of bulges out and essentially looks like it's, you know, dilating. So you turn that on and, you know, you can create sort of a creepy effect like you see here so you know there's certainly um, you know a lot you can do with this effect um, likewise with the very same shot you see here we could add a cat eye effect let me see get rid of the mask and You know, or even do you know a Google search for some lizards and you know just completely replace the eye. Let's see, feathering this just a bit. It's a little crooked. Okay, so you can see you know there are certainly other cool possibilities or hey you know the one my personal favorite is the yellow smiley face um, a la last action hero right we all wanted to have one of those <laughs> so anyway um, there's a there's a lot of possibilities here you know of course the great thing here is you can even animate the eye you know from you know starting out at one color going to another color or you know being regular and then turning into a werewolf or whatever um, I'm actually working on a story about um, a guy who's half reptile and half human and he's from the future and what he does is he travels back in time to fight crime and uh, it's pretty it's really s solid script and I think uh, I think it's going places so definitely check that out um, feel free to use the uh, tutorial uh, for blemish removal on my skin here and that should probably look a lot better. Um, the real problem actually was in high school when I wanted to meet girls. Uh, you know, very, very difficult because of, because of my acne. But uh, put me in a dark room with a hot chick and forget about it. Like seriously, like forget about it because it wasn't happening. Um, very lonely high school life. Um, luckily I grew out of that and now I'm just a very lonely older guy. So there you go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Very happy. Got a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. Um, life is good. If only I had a Coke. 
Okay, so let's wrap this up. Uh, my name's Andrew Kramer with VideoCopilot.net. Don't forget to check out our blog. We have a lot of great things going on there. And of course, check out our great products. We have Evolution, Riot Gear, um, you know, tons of great products. Uh, check them out, and I'm sure they'll help you out. And uh, if you buy them, you'll help us out. See how that works? It's a circle, a circle of life. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time.